white flag. Money flag next. Jimmy Johnson on the 48. He'll stay tucked to that yellow line all the way around this racetrack. He will not open the bottom. That yellow line is his best friend. Just keep that car down low where they can't get under it. I don't think they've got the steam to do it. Stewart looks low. He's got Gordon now up high. Gordon has Biffle. Jeff Gordon clawing his way toward the front. Gordon all. Ryan Newman's you and the 12. 12 jumped up top. Jimmy's pulling away. Yeah, he got those guys that Ryan had to block the 24 and gave uh, Jimmy a little extra room there coming to the flag. Jimmy Johnson wins the Budweiser shootout in his third appearance, and he will take Hendrick Motorsports to victory lane in this event for the fifth time. I tell you, that's a darn good race. Right flag this time. They were four wide, and Dale Jarrett got squeezed out of that sandwich. Yeah, Dale said, you know, I'm on the pole, and guess what? Right. You boys just go right on up there. Ooh, somebody's getting forced high, but they held on to it. Last lap. Kerry Earnhardt in the 33, Greg Biffle in the 16. They've been working right against the wall through the corner, getting three or four cars a lap. Biffle. Half a lap to go. Biffle's been good all weekend. Comes Ryan Newman. Got the push. Now, who's back there against Kerry? Kenny Wallace in the double zero. Battling Kerry Earnhardt, 33 and double zero for the final transfer spot. See Jamie McMurray in the 42 car. Remember, it wasn't that long ago he was down a lap. Down to the line in the first to the Gatorade duel. Junior by the line, Mike Waltrip. Mike, got it. Michael Waltrip wins it in the final 500 feet. Oh, boy. Mike Skinner finishes third to transfer into the 500. And unofficially, Kenny Wallace by one one hundredth of a second over Kerry Earnhardt, the last transfer spot. Oh, and Truex down to the inside. Of Matt Kenseth, he's going to climb up to fourth. Well, this is it, boys. White flag, and then all the stakes are up for grabs. Look at Robbie Gordon in the seven car. He knows he can see those cars in front of him. He has to get to him. Whoa, With Riggs! Half a lap to go. Scott Whoa. Riggs got sideways off the bumper of Kenseth. He did. Whoa. Good a good job of not wrecking both of them. Look at Kevin LePage waving out the window to Martin Truex in the one. Stay behind me. Stay behind me. Matt Kenseth fighting back. Robbie Gordon in the seven. If he can get by Martin Truex in the one, he'll make the Daytona 500. They're coming to the checkered flag. And that's his only shot. It's going to be close. He's going to have it. Well, no race. He's going to save the one car. Stewart. Tony Stewart wins. Jeff Burton second. Kevin LePage third. Martin Truex races his way in in the final transfer spot. And Kerry Earnhardt will pack up and head home. Sitting with Bobby Hutchins there. A tough break for Kerry. He won't be in the Daytona 500 because Boris said and John Andretti will take the final two spots based on Sunday's qualifying speed. Here they come, boys. White flag. One to go. Scott Riggs to Boris. Stewart looks to go three wide. Thinks better of it. He is trapped behind Jimmy Johnson. Boy, that 97 car of Kurt Busch is a fast piece of equipment right there. He's got to look. He's the only Ford in the front five. What can he do? Look at Scott Riggs in that 10 car. He's trying to get him a top five finish in this Daytona 500. And there's Jimmy Johnson on the 48 on the outside, Daryl. Somebody needs to get up there and go with him, but I don't know if Tony Stewart can run the outside or not. He had an all day. Push to the outside. Gordon slams the door and then the turn three. Six cars have a chance to win it. Jeff Gordon's going to lead him into turn four. They're one mile from home. Tony Stewart just slid up the racetrack. He and Jimmy Johnson are going to make contact. Three wide. They're bouncing off each other. Jeff Gordon's going to win his third Daytona 500. Kirk Busch, Dale Jr., and Scott Riggs completes a dream week with a fourth place finish. Boy, he did. And by uh, those cars right there, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Thank God, boys. That was going to the white flag this time. It's going to be close. Jeff Gordon has gone to the garage. Can you imagine it's going to be close? 500 miles, three and a half hours, 250 laps. Three guys fighting for the win. Yeah, it's a three-horse race. McMurray well back. Jimmy Biffle Johnson. and Bush to the bottom. He drives it down into turn one and two, but Kurt Bush in the 97 got a good bite off the corner there side by side for second. Boy, you can see Kurt. He is trying out. He's driving.
driving as hard as he can go. Basically, he's holding him up just enough that uh, Greg's going to be able to get to the finish line here first. Kurt Busch holds Jimmy Johnson at bay, and Greg Biffle is coming around here to win here in Montana, California. Good job. Good job, boys. And he is glad to see 250 laps on that board. Those tires had no more laps left in them. That's zero laps left in my tires. Jimmy Johnson comes up one lap shy and <laughs> being side by side with Biffle. And now you know why Biffle was jumping sideways and sideways over there. Get her today. Jimmy Johnson has had eight straight finishes of sixth or better, including four wins in two seconds. This would make it nine, and he's one lap away. Pretty smooth ride. Done a good job all day long. Got himself out front. Where that car had such a huge advantage is on new tires. It was really bad fast for a number of laps on new tires. He has clean racetrack now. Half a lap to go. Halfway down the back stretch. So the house of Roush. Absolutely rock. <laughs> I love my job. I love my team. And boy, I'd love to see a victory lane. The house of Roush becomes a teardown for Hotel Hendrick. Jimmy Johnson brings the low Chevrolet to the checkered flag. Five wins in two seconds in the last nine races for Johnson. Yeah, my three Hendrick cars in the top. Yeah, yeah. Turn two, a crash on the final lap. Jeremy right Mayfield. Mayfield, I'm not sure what happened. Here they go, white flag, boys, last lap. He's there. And he cut the margin in less than half. Hey, boys, watch this. Jimmy goes up high to block him. That may or may not be good. If he can get that run right here, if he can get it, keep that momentum. He's going to get a run at him. He'll get one shot at turn three and four. I'm telling you, they're going to be side by side when they come to the line. It's going to be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. Johnson tries to block him. It's who can stay in the front here on turn one. And here they come, and I think Gordon got the advantage. He did it. 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 Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Two one hundredths of a second at 500 miles. White flag for Kevin Harvey. Great day for children seeing them sitting up on the pit box down there, kind of enjoying this afternoon. Nothing, like the, go. nothing like the sunny afternoon in Bristol, Tennessee. Kevin Harvick from the back to the front scores the 77th Career Cup win for owner Richard Childress. Harvick wins the Food City 500. Elliot Sapper posted in second, and that is a happy group. Under the direction this week of Scott Miller, the engineer with Todd Berry, the crew chief uh, at home watching closely, I'm sure. Todd, congratulations. Come to the white flag. Had just that little bit of a, a lag in the restart on the nine car where Jeff got that jump, that three or four car lane jump. That's, that's what's made all the difference in the world. Chevy, Dodge, Ford, and two Dodges with both Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace in the top five in their final Martinsville spring appearance. Jeff Gordon scores his 71st career win and his sixth at Martinsville. White flag, one to go. He's going to be there when they get back around here, I can tell you that. He is cutting into that 42's lead. But that's, that's the cat right there. Still got plenty of room. Just give yourself plenty of room to get you a good picture here. You can get it off the four. Give you some room on that 77. Say that'd be the thing to do. Greg Biffle's going to lead 219 laps, and for car owner Jack Roush, it's going to be four wins with four different drivers. Greg Biffle wins in Texas. Jimmy McMurray second. Jimmy Johnson in third. Casey Mears fourth. Sterling Marlin fifth. Three Ganassi cars in the top five. Little brother got home six today. Good job for that team. Bring it home. One more lap to go. One more lap. He just drove it in turn three way, way, way too hard. He got up in the loose stuff with him. That was kind of last-ditch effort. Walter should be safe in second place. Jeff Burton is eight seconds back. Kevin Harvick, 29 car, has problems. And he will drop from ninth place. Off turn four. Kurt Busch, the defending series champ, gets his 12th career win. The fifth win at Phoenix for car owner Jack Roush and Bush's first victory of the season. Guys, we're 
Michael Waltrip second, Jeff Burton in the 31 car, you heard him, ends up third, Dale Earnhardt Jr. fourth, Brian Vickers fifth, Bobby Labonte sixth, and how about Carl Edwards up to seventh? Yeah, he passed uh, Kyle Busch with a lap to go to climb to seventh, Kyle at eighth, Johnny Sauter, great run, ninth place, Joe Nemechek, tenth, and Kevin Harvick will limp around and be the last car on the lead lap in 19. He wanted to go. Worked now, just right. Now, boys, let me tell you, that 15 and that 20, it could be trouble for Jeff Gordon. McMurray and Mayfield traded a little plane, and Jeremy is up to fourth. Kurt Busch, the defending series champ, battles for fifth. Four cars with a little breakaway. Jeff Gordon protecting that bottom of the racetrack. You can see Michael Walter all over the back bumper of Tony Stewart. They just can't get to him. They're there, but they can't get enough run on him to get a get a get by him. It's a long way down here to the start finish line, but I just don't think they got the steam. Jeff, as far as is too fast. A lot of races have been decided between right here and the finish line, down past the pit exit. But Jeff Gordon is going to hold him off and win the Aaron's 499. Tony Stewart, a hard-fought second. Michael Waltrip third. Jeremy Mayfield to fourth. And Jamie McMurray, top five. He'll be coming to the white flag this time. Greg Bipple has led the most laps. Can he lead the last lap? I think he might do it. Here comes Gordon for second on the inside. And remember, Gordon has those four tires. He's got a lap to get it done. White flags in the air. They're in turn two. This is the race. This is it. Casey Kane takes third. Newman fades to fourth. The Greg Bickle has good. them all in his mirror. He's got it made. If he can just ride her through here, just keep her between the rails. I mean, Jeff Gordon drove that thing down into turn three. Greg Bickle leads 176 laps and wins the Dodge Charger 500. And they're ready to come to the start finish line. Rusty Wallace in the two. Kevin Harvick in the 29. White flags in the air. took over the number nine from legend Bill Elliott, who served as his mentor for a season, and now it's all his own. Off turn four, Casey Kane is a winner at last. Well, what a battle, though, for second and for him. They were poking and gouging back there for second. I'm telling you, Brian Newman was all over the back of Tony. Now, right now, he's playing. Waffle got to run around Bush that time. I think he's going to back, pass back for third. This is the battle right here. Brian Vickers, he's on the high Coming side. Got a little bit of a runoff turn two. But a big block by Blimp. It's going to get exciting down here, boys. Go or go home time right now. Vickers turns it to the bottom, he's but he it. can't get by. He, can't get on, he just can't get enough nose under him without getting into him. Oh, oh he turns it sideways. He and Vickers wins. He did. Vickers has beat him across the line just by a car win. Mike Bliss did a whale of a job. Did we make it? Did we make it? No, Mike. You didn't make it. One more white flag. And here's what you know about Mark Martin. You know who he'll share that million bucks with? Everybody. Boy, Elliot Sadler drove it down into turn one. He used every bit of the racetrack off turn two. It's just not going to be enough, D.W. No. Nope. Mark is just too good, and Elliot's done everything he can, but Mark's just too good. Here he comes off turn four. Nice job, bud. Bring him home here. Mark Barton wins the next to All-Star Challenge and $1,101,000. He just bounced the floor between Jeff Ford and Jimmy Johnson. Jeff Ford will beat him back to the line to finish fourth. Jimmy Johnson fifth, and their teammate Brian Vickers finishes third. That, that, that pass right there cost uh, Jimmy Johnson about $120,000. <laughs> I have to go, buddy. It's all you. Tim Grass to hold him on. He, Last time. He can't do it. I don't believe he can do it unless Bobby messes up. There he goes to the bottom, Darrell. They're going to be side by side. You can't, you can't, Bobby's on the high side. You though. can't pass over there. There's no way. All clear. One last charge right here, man. It's all over, boys. Was that the last best move made outside. too soon? Here he comes. Outside, outside. Just like in Atlanta last March. He's not going to be able to do it. I don't think they're side yes, by side. Yes, he is. Here he comes. Hey, baby, bring it.
of a second. I thought when he got beat off of turn two, it was all over, but he drove it in on the outside and won it. White flag for Drake Biffle. Those two tires are going to hang in there for uh, Kyle Busch. Another good call in the pits. Plenty of room. He's got a 4.6 second lead. That's like
Jimmy Johnson is trying to get by Dale Jarrett on the outside. Yeah, that 20 car will get awfully wide from this point on. Half a lap for Tony Stewart. One on the road course a week ago at Sonoma. Picked up emotion and momentum. Pursuing his second next Cup Cup championship. But tonight, he's going to shut out the field, and Tony Stewart takes the checker flag at Daytona. White flag in the air in Chicagoland, one to go. Junior was leading, and Kenseth had the fastest lap last time, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's going to be close, but I agree with you, Bill. I don't think he's going to be able to get him. Down the back stretch for the final time. He exaggerated on eight, but <laughs> it's enough. Three, three, and four. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has struggled all season, but today the great eight goes back to victory lane. Earnhardt wins in Chicago. Stewart, the 20, the leader. Behind him, the 97 of Kurt Busch. Then Bobby Labonte, Kyle Busch, and Greg Biffle. And Biffle is right on the bumper of the five. That's the race for fourth. That's your race leader. Half a lap to go. Remember, those two had contact just a few laps ago. They're going to battle it out for fourth. But Tony Stewart's going to bring that Home Depot Chevrolet off of turn four. And Tony Stewart, a winner at Daytona, now wins at New Hampshire. comes Bobby Labonte, finished third, and here comes the battle for the fourth position between <laughs> Bush and Biffle. And Kyle probably won't let up. We'll just keep going. Huge win for Tony Stewart. Last lap. Newman and Edwards battle. Bush trying to pull away. Wallace looking for a second place finish. Newman under Edwards. Hangs on. Newman continues with the clinic. Comes Stewart. Stewart's got a head of steam right there. And his teammate Bobby Labonte behind him. Caution is out. That will decide it. Kurt Busch is the race winner. One attempt at the green-white checkered finish. The caution comes out. Kurt Busch will come back and get the checkered flag under the caution. As soon as the caution comes out, the field is frozen. They are on the track. Not by scoring loop, but by visual sightings and by TV cameras around the track. There was no question here, though. Kurt Busch was the leader. Awesome job, guys. Awesome job, Kurt Busch. Awesome. And Kurt Busch takes the checkered flag at Pocono. Outstanding runs for Wallace and Martin. Edwards from the back of the field to fourth. Newman gets a top five. He sweeps out of turn four and sees the white flag at the same track where his hero A.J. Foyt won before him. Now Tony Stewart is two and a half miles away from history. Looking in his mirror every oh, about two seconds right now. <laughs> turn two at the brickyard. Down the back stretch. This is going to be really, really big for him. Half a lap to go. The fans cheering. Through turn four, the last trip down the front stretch. Tony Stewart, a native Hoosier, his dream comes true. Tony Stewart wins the All State 400 at the Brickyard. Let the party begin. <laughs> Folks, there's one happy race car driver. White flag 
last lap at the Glen. Dave Burns. Robbie, Robbie Gordon radioed his crew. No way we're going to make it. We're done. I don't know if he meant he's out of fuel. If there's no way he can catch the 20. And no, he's not catching the 20. That's probably what he's talking about. They're just not going to catch the 20. Because the car certainly seems to be under power. Well, this 20 team is in top championship form right now. Off the win at Indianapolis a week ago. Headed for victory lane here at Watkins Glen. To Michigan next week and then Bristol. I mean, in two laps, he has pulled out to a second and a half lead on really good drivers and race cars. Won at Sonoma earlier this year. Tony Stewart, the new road course king in the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. Sweeps off of seven, makes the right-hander. He can see the checkered flag now. Tony Stewart goes back to back and wins at the Glen. Talk about dominating. Rich might have been ready for that. Or he blew up, one or the other. He blew up, he smoked it, and got in one. Yeah, but it cost Rich really sure was. <laughs> or did, no, I guess it didn't. Uh, one flank is in the air. With the final lap here in Michigan. Mayfield down the back stretch. Does he have enough? Does he have enough fuel to get there? Can Riggs possibly hoop him in? You come to Michigan, sometimes you have to gamble to win. Jeremy Mayfield driving for Ray Abraham, raced his way to the chase one year ago, and today Jeremy Mayfield takes the bigger flag at Michigan. And Matt Dunzoff will finish in third. How disappointed is that? Nemechek back up to eighth. Yep. White flag, last lap at Bristol. Half a mile to go. Boy, Curtin threw it in there hard, didn't he? He's trying as hard as he possibly can to catch that 17 car, but he's not going to be able to do it. He's not. Matt Kenseth wins at Bristol. Locked into the chase for the next Hell Cup is going to take the checkered flag. Kurt Busch wins at Richmond. Good job, guys. Good job. And Ryan Newman. Hear that relief? <laughs> makes the chase for the championship by 69 points. White flag last lap. That was a great move. <laughs> It's not over yet. There's still a half a mile to go. Sliding that car right. 
right now. He's driving for everything he's got, but looks like it is over. Gonna, yep, I don't think he's going to be close enough to even make a move on him. Has one more chance down in three and four. That's where Ryan Newman has been so good. Newman on the four. The chase begins in New Hampshire, and Ryan Newman wins. Kenton gets third, Biffle fourth. Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin for a position. And then Jimmy Johnson. Okay. White flag, last lap. He's underneath them. He's right there. Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy said, come on, teammate. Cut me some slack. Through turns three and four now. Kyle Busch, the rookie, looking at Johnson, the championship contender. Teammates coming to the checkers. Jimmy Johnson wins at Dover. strong that 88 is we're finally going to find out oh crash kyle petty hard crash we stay green now the caution is out race is over there are 19 scoring loops around this track the 88 88 nascar will use their scoring loops and television replays to determine the position of the cars on the track. You do not race back to the yellow in NASCAR. And it was a wreck Dale Jarrett was involved in, in that brought on that rule. Woo! Yeah, baby, we're back on the map. <laughs> this is crew chief Todd Parrott. And boy, Dale ran, I, I talked about, you saw him drop to the back most of the race. That's just a veteran move, smart racing. I think Mark's got plenty of buffer right now between him and Biffle. Looking to get by Dale Jarrett. And Jarrett does move over. Let Mark go. Six tenths of a second back to Biffle. I don't think Greg can catch him. Last week we asked Mark about his 34 wins, what the next one would mean. He said he really didn't care about the next race win. He just wanted the championship. But he's going to get the win. Win number 35 for Mark. I tell you, that two-tire stop that he made back in the race, get that track position up there, and once he got that position, the crew, what a job they did to hold that position all day long. One more lap. White flag, final lap. Driving 110% now. Yes, he is. <laughs> Does not look like Bush can get there. Jimmy Johnson has had a wild night. He and his crew have fought through all kinds of problems. But Jimmy Johnson, four in a row at Lowe's. Unbelievable, guys. You guys are the best. Last lap, half a mile to go. trying to lead the last one. One more shot at three and four for Stewart. Can't get there. Jeff Gordon brings Hendrick Motorsports back to victory lane at Martinsville. Steve Latar's first victory as a crew chief. Steve. White flag for Carl Edwards. It's just been a pleasure to work with throughout the season. 
fun, a lot of charm, a lot of determination to the next Cup Series. He has a breath of fresh air. Came here in Atlanta, won Bush Race. In fact, the next day, won the next Cup, cup Race. We talked about it. Sweep had become in fashion here in the next Cup Series. And Carl Edwards sweeps at Atlanta. Tiebreaker. 